If you're being a goddess queen, then you want a god king as your equal. You're not around here looking for a prince. You're not around here wanting to attract a prince, somebody who's waiting on someone else to give them a kingdom. She is dark as obsidian. And it's light and beautiful and bright as the sun. The salt of the earth. Fire burning and water dripping. How could they be using goddess of magic? She is timeless. The blood that doesn't need a blood. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again, the black woman is gone. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, I am your girl. Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, and welcome to my spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to the crew, but my returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then, like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel, and if you're feeling a vibe, well, go ahead on and subscribe, but before you blink, share this link welcome wi-fi's to the black luxury edition of the wireless woman and if there's anything that says hey black people you made it it's the bmw the gold standard of luxury vehicles so if you play you lay but if you know, you know. So what time is it? It is time to call the roll. I need all of my big body BMWs to the front of the class to read aloud. The only people who care enough about our liberation to fight for us is us. Thank you. Thank you for coming back once again to chill with me here in room 303. This episode is going to be centered around BMWs or black male worshipers. Now, before you check off of this video, go ahead and make sure that you like it before you leave or you can dislike it either way, but don't waste this click. Go ahead and give me some engagement for your time. I am vehemently dedicated to the building of the black community. And one of the hardest things for me as being a content creator focused on particularly black female content, but black community content is to build a channel that's not just about dating and relationships or hypergamy. There just appears to be certain topics that the black community doesn't mind engaging on. But then there are other more pressing issues that it seems like we're desperately trying to avoid. Now, when we live and deal in the reality, whether we can perceive it or not, you know, there has to be a wake up call. There has to be an awakening in order for us to be able to actually manifest our destiny. We have to use our energy in the realm of reality not in the realm of fantasy in order to bring about the changes that we want to see. Now, I am a child of the 80s, so I was fed that same hope. I was fed that same fantastic belief that if you believe it, you can achieve it. You know, put hope in your brains instead of dope in your veins. And 
I get it. I respect it. However, as I've said before, we have moved into a new age. We have moved into an age where activism is needed in order to produce tangible results. Like our children are literally living in the imagination, the fantasy that we have conceived for them. Could anyone who is a child of the 70s or the 80s or even the very early 90s could have conceived of a completely virtual digital world could actually conceive of a place in a time where you didn't have to play instruments to make music where you didn't have to develop any type of skill set in order to bring forth industry you could literally just imagine it and it come forward but the problem is that our world is shaped by fantasy now you know to the point that our work ethic our industry, our skill sets, our ingenuity has been greatly impaired. You know, everything we touch and see these days has its basis, its perception in fantasy and imagination. And when Walt Disney did it, I mean, it was a super cool thing, you know, to animate life. But at that time, art imitated life. But we're at a point now where life is beginning to imitate art, where you have women that want to dress up like what they see on TV, as opposed to the things that we see being a reflection of real life. You know, we don't set the trends anymore. We simply follow them. We fall in line like people who are incapable of thinking for themselves. And there's no place where I've seen this be more prevalent and destructive in the black community than in this idea of black male worship. Now, there are whole entire channels and content devoted completely to this subject and the need for its eradication. However, I am going to touch on this subject in an attempt to bring balance to it. I mean, there are great aspects of black male worship for a black woman. I mean, you are made to reflect the image of a black man. Why would you not want to see them lifted to a pedestal? Why would you not want to see them worshiped? Worship of the black man is to a certain extent the embodiment of the worship of black women as well. Black female bodies made these men Oftentimes, black females had a hand in raising these men to demonize or degradate them would in part be to denigrate yourselves, right? Who would want to be separated from their own men? However, we live in a different culture that doesn't allow us to have the same reflected image that our men do. Actually, it does. Why are black women so angry? Was your mother angry? The problem comes in that when people are raised to a level of celebrity, a level of worship, that generally comes through either some great accomplishment and achievement, some sort of feat of valor, some hard work, some unduplicatable talent, gift, these are generally the things that thrust people into spotlight. However, I believe this is the mark of our participation trophy generation, that people have been allowed to be celebrated, revered, simply for being present. The bar has gotten so low at this point, the bar is in hell. But tonight, we died in hell! This is problematic because Every entity that we know of as God or as king has become that as a result of service, you know, as a result of giving up their lives. If you look at God kings like Osiris and Jesus, their ascension came as a direct result of their death and sacrifice of their willingness to be sacrificed for their people. This is how these people were elevated to the status of God and kingship. Now, when people are allowed to ascend and be elevated, propped up, celebrated for nothing more than just their presence, like social media presence, you become an influencer. Well, now you have this empty, hollow Godhead. You have this empty, hollow leadership like it's literally like thriller you got zombie kings 
which if you have not watched the show Kingdom on Netflix, I mean, what are you doing with your life? It's like this ancient Chinese Kung Fu zombie series. Anyway, I digress. My point is you get that. You get a whole generation of zombie kings. I think that the need and the desire for black male worship came out of the fact that we see whiteness in religion, whiteness at the head of government and agencies all around us. These are the people that are revered as being the head. So I can understand black women clinging to black male worship in an attempt to create the same type of deification that we see with the white males and white men around us. However, it's producing an opposite effect because our allegiance is being pledged without any hope of protection, provision, without requiring the dominance of our males over other male groups. The problem with black male worship is that it allows our men to be heads over women and children in our kingdom. But what does that do for us on a global scale? How does that make us competitive globally? If our men will not compete against each other for resources or goods and are completely unwilling to compete against males of other races for scarce goods and resources for their community as well. The reason why this is imperative that we begin to fix this now and require so much more for our allegiance and our submission is because we are moving into an area and a time where resources are going to become so much more scarce than we have ever seen it before. Black people are gonna have to be a self-contained, self-sustaining community or else we are going to perish. I know a lot of people think that us intermarrying into other races and cultures is something that benefits us. It gives us access to other communities' resources. However, you have to understand that it also takes us away from building our own community. It also stretches the gene pool to include elements that we also have to deal with like colorism, like preferences that simply divide us culturally over new issues that shouldn't even be issues for a race of dominated people. Like we don't talk about economics. We don't talk about education. We're talking about tips to get a man and bundles and makeup like I'm not saying that these things aren't important because they are. We've worked hard enough to be able to enjoy the lives that we live. However, these things cannot be central to our cultural identity. I can't walk around. I can't walk around feeling like less of a woman because my hair is natural instead of artificial. I shouldn't be made by the group of men whose image I reflect to feel like I am one less than them. How does that make sense? But two, less attractive to them simply because I'm reflecting exactly the image of who and what they are. And that's whatever that is, because everything we've been called finds its foundations in who they are as people, whether we're resistant and have bad attitudes, whether we're superficial and gold diggers. Tell me how that doesn't find its origin in black men. And the reason why this is important for us to begin to sever that particular tie is because as long as we see us and them as being the same, will be obligated and tied into worshiping an image that is not God. It's really no different than the Hebrew boys being asked to bow to a golden image. They know that that is not what God showed Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar done done the remix and he like, yeah, everybody, I need you to pledge your allegiance to this. But that is not God's plan. What we're walking out, what we're walking in is not God's plan for black people. 
It's not God's plan for his chosen people. I care not whether you agree with me on that particular point. It is the hubris and the narcissism of knowing for a fact that we're God's people that keep us crippled in not being able to fulfill the destiny of that. Because even if we don't live up to greatness, we're still going to be targeted, marketed. We're still going to be oppressed. Like how much lower as a community can we go? But we're still the ones that can't get an act passed in Congress. We're still the ones getting shot dead in the street. We're still the ones who are underemployed and uneducated. So at this point, we can either live up to the destiny of being marked ones, chosen ones, or be crushed by the greatness of the calling that we've been given. Up until recently, for any person to become a sitting president, they had to have had some level of military service. They've had to have shown some level of service, having served in government at a certain level where we could entrust them with the highest office in this country. Well, over the last couple of elections, we have seen those traditions be overturned on a national level. But the same way that we saw how that unraveled the moral fiber of this country, when we crowned a clown king, look at what it did to our country. So ultimately, black women, we are in the same situation when we're making husbands and fathers out of men that really should not even be allowed to take the trash out in our communities. We're going to continue to get the energy that we put out. We're going to raise sons in the image of this. If we don't begin to disconnect ourselves from the worship of trash men. It's honestly no different than being a Trump supporter. It's no different than being a white supremacist at this point to continue to coddle and pamper and provide for and protect men who aren't capable of doing the same thing that you do. Who aren't willing to do for you what you already do for yourself. Forget the fact that you do it for them. That you do it for the children that we've made. And I don't want to come off bitter. Like all of my content is not going to be centered around this. But I want to begin to have honest discussions about where we are. And one of the hardest things for me as I'm trying to build a community of like-minded women who can help to begin to propel the entire black community forward help close the wealth gap, help reach new levels of education. One of the hardest things, one of the biggest obstacles to progress has been these male identified misogynistic women. It's misogyny. You do not have to be a man to be a misogynist. We have misogynistic women who are on the side of male tyranny simply because they believe that it provides a way to be secure, but it doesn't. All it provides is an empty validation. And the problem with that is it builds up within our women the same narcissism that we're dealing with in our men. It builds up narcissism within our children. When we reward those based on the words that are coming out of their mouth when there's no action behind it. And that's what this is. It's a call to action. If you have energy to give, if you're going to worship anything, let it be the work of a man's hands. Let it be the people who are coming in to rescue our community. Because I got to be honest, as we start to talk about food shortages, housing crisis, I want to be next to people that's building houses. A lot of single friends that I have and I myself, we live around Indians, we live around Hispanics, 
and we're watching them build their communities. They're more often than not buying houses two at a time, cars three and four at a time. They're practicing group economics and it is working for them. They're not trying to start at the top. They don't need to be billionaires and, and make their rap career work to get their to get their homies out the hood. They starting with their homies in the hood and building from the bottom up. And we're going to see a huge wealth transfer in just a little while. I've seen through my prophetic gifting and economic, a huge giant economic crash in 2027. And I keep telling y'all, whatever it is that you're trying to get, whatever it is you're trying to build and you're trying to have, you need to have it by like 2025 at the latest. Because laws and legislation that are completely against the working class are going to start to come out. And it's going to impede people's ability to own anything. Ownership is for sale right now. Ownership. And we as black people still leasing. We are so far culturally behind everybody else in this country. Can we just have some real conversations about that? Can we stop being worried about trying to get husbands out of the most unmarried group of men in this country and focus? Can we focus on ourselves and each other and these children? Can we focus on education and economics and community building? For just a couple years, I promise you, we can go right back to all the ratchet politics that we have going on in this community. But for a second, for a second, can we unplug? Can we be unbothered by all of the stuff that's going on around us and unleash and unlock our inner potential as a group of people who have the power I mean, we've always been under persecution because we've always had the power to take this whole thing over. If we don't become the moral, resourceful people that we've always been, we can't save this country from itself and from what it's become. We cannot be like the people who have oppressed us and then overcome the oppression. The oppression is in the machine. It's in the thinking and the programming. It's in the cycle. And we have to break the cycle by not being worried about the things that they're worried about. We have to be about the business that makes our community grow, which has always been group economics. If you don't believe me, watch the other cultures. Look at what the Asians are doing. They come here, bring their cousin with them, uncles with them. They all run the nail shop. From the nail shop comes the hair shop. From the hair shop comes the Chinese restaurant. From that comes the house another house for the cousins. They're bringing refugees over. Everybody's getting sponsorship. Like they're building. I respect it. I know when you say certain things like that, it seems racist, but it's racial, not racist. This is what they're doing. And they're focused on education. There's a guy um, that does reels I'm going to have to, I'm going to find his name and put it in this video, but there's a guy that does reels on YouTube and TikTok and all that. And he, he's an Asian guy and he, and he shows how focused his parents were on his education and on his success. Like in African culture, African blacks, Asians, Indians, doctor or a lawyer, it's expected. It's required that you build on the generation that came before you. We're the only ones that have our kids, our young black boys out in a field, a plantation field, training them to play sports. I used to date a guy and he was from Rhode Island and he could sew. He would sew my clothes for me. He would patch up holes in the clothes that we had you know me because I'm so fat in the ass my pants would hang off in the back and he saw that and noticed that about me early in our dating and he would be like take those pants off and you know me I'm like and he like no give them to me and he would sew up my pants in the back in order so that they would fit properly you know he would tailor my uniforms for me and he could cook 
He could work on the car. He could paint. You know, he was just handy. And I'm like, how did you learn to do all this stuff? And he said, scouts. He said, when I was growing up, I was in scouting. And even he drew the distinction. He was like, you know, it's men down south. While they're out playing sports and all that stuff, we were learning skills. And I had never even, that never even dawned on me. I never thought about it like that because I was like, yes, everything we do with young black children is recreation. We think we're going to make it to school on track and football and basketball scholarships, but the emphasis is on the athletics, not the academics. We don't go to school on a football scholarship to become a doctor or a lawyer. We go to school on a football scholarship to become professional football players, top down, instead of bottom up. And you can see how that plays out in the psyche of these men when they have these dreams that are broken and now they're completely of no use to their community because they have no education, they have no skills, they have no ambition outside of being the greatest. They're not even good at things because they were aspiring to be great at something that is only reserved for 4% of black men. So we're going to have everybody hustle backwards to try to get to a pot that is given by white people in exchange for selling your people into slavery. Because that's what rap music is. It's meant to enslave the minds of black people. That's what athletics are when we watch these black men get knocked the fuck out simply for our entertainment. These are not the people that build our community. I haven't heard a celebrity, professional athlete, anybody say anything about what's going on with voting rights. All these people told you to go out and rock the vote or wrap the vote or whatever you were supposed to do with your vote. But now that they're trying to take your vote, where the fuck they at? Where they at now? What they got to say now? Where's their advice now? They told you to get your credit up. They told you to buy Bugattis and all this different stuff. Where is... Where are they when we start talking about food shortages? Is your favorite rapper going to feed you? You spend all this energy posting about Antonio Brown on your, on your news feed. Is he going to feed you? It's the worship that these people live off of. Keeping you occupied and engaged thinking and talking about them. Because what you don't do while you're worried about that is take care of women and children. What you don't do while you're worried about that is build your community, learn a skill, get a trade, read a book. Like we got trash values and black women, I am asking you to cut that cord, that umbilical cord that you got on your man. He's not your son. And be the queens that you're supposed to be. If you're being a goddess queen, then you want a god king as your equal. You're not around here looking for a prince. You're not around here wanting to attract a prince, somebody who's waiting on someone else to give them a kingdom. You want to deal with men who are actually out there in their kingdom doing what kings do, which is serve. Service determines greatness. Even more than talent, people would rather have a leader that cares about who they are as people, who is one of them. That's the one thing I constantly heard people talking about when Donald Trump was running. They say he's out of touch. He's out of touch with the regular man. He's out of touch. Now, don't don't ask me how that message turned from he's out of touch with us. He's not one of us into He's our fearless leader. I don't know how that exchange happened, but the same thing that I watched happen when it came to electing Donald Trump, I'm watching black women do for the most powerless, pathetic, unproductive black men of our community. They are not the ones that deserve that praise and that worship. And I don't care if we're only elevating one or two men. I would rather give all the worship and praise to that faction of man 
than to spread all this dust across our population. Now, if you're with me and you want to be a part of the start of the revolution, if you want to change your own mind in an attempt to create a vibrational reverberation that can change our culture and our community, then drop that headphones emoji in the comments. Let these comments reveal how you really feel. But ladies, it is time to get unplugged, unbothered. I mean, let that shit go so that you can be unleashed. Now, I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the neighborhood wireless woman. I will be back at you in the next one. Class is now dismissed. I'll see you in the next episode. You took my soul from me. You left a hole.